I've been working with a gardening organization to help them use Notion to track how much they're harvesting, manage their volunteers, maintain plant inventories and garden supplies, etc. So I wanted to share with you a quick example today of how we're using Notion to help them build a harvest log. The organization needs to be able to report how much they are growing of the different fruits and vegetables each week and provide a report summary to the city. This is a perfect use case for automation and buttons. I wanted to build something really user friendly that anybody on the team could go to this harvest dashboard and be able to add a new entry and make sure that everything shows up correctly. So let me show you what I built and how it works and hopefully it just gives you some ideas for what is possible with Notion. So I have this central harvest page. I want one dashboard page that Lucille can come to and enter in the data as necessary. So we have a few databases that are working together. We have a garden journal and that's a single journal that has basically a record of all of the different things that happen in the garden, whether it's watering the beds, planting something new, adding compost, you name it, it happens inside the garden journal in the form of a new record. Now on this particular page, we're also relating a harvest log. This is a very simple database that just has data relating to what we're collecting and how much of it so that they can report it back to the city. Both of those databases are related to a plant inventory. So let me jump in, show you what this experience looks like, and you can have a look at the filters and the templates and kind of see what we're doing here. So at the top of this page, I have a little prompt ready to harvest, and you'll see that there's a garden journal database here with two views, one for adding the new harvest that already has the filters applied. So as soon as Lucille adds something new here, she's gonna create a new page in the garden journal, and it's gonna have a date of today, and the entry type is gonna be harvest log. What I've also done here is I've set the harvest log template to be the default template. So it's already gonna be automatically applied as soon as she creates a new one. I'm gonna create a new one here just to show you what this looks like. And you can see it's already said harvest log today. I don't even need to do anything. What I might do just because this is a test, I'm gonna add test here. And so let's take a look at what's inside here. There's a date, there is a multi-select to say what was added to the bed, the entry type. And so by default, this template is applying the harvest log entry type. And you can see some of these other ones as well. There are specific plots that need to be maintained so she can relate these to certain plots. I don't think that's a property that they're going to use very often, but it's there if they want to. And this harvest law can have a status. So when it's been submitted to the city, they can mark it as done or submitted. And you can see here, there's a relation to the plant database, ongoing tasks, and we have a relation to the harvest log. And that's where the heavy lifting happens. So in the body of this calendar entry, this is where the work actually happens. So I've got some instructions here. So again, even if it's not Lucille that's using this, that anyone coming in and handling this harvest log should be able to do it pretty easily. I wanted it to be as low maintenance as possible. There are still some things that might have to happen manually, but hopefully we've simplified it as much as possible. So you can see the log is here and it's already kind of ready to total up some numbers here. Now, these harvest logs happen every week. And so we know that there's gonna be harvesting of some of the same vegetables and fruits over and over again. So if I open this up, you're gonna see I've added some buttons here. And let's open up one so you can see what's actually happening. When I click the add lettuce button, what it's doing is it's adding a page to the harvest log, it's naming it lettuce, it is relating it to this current page, which is in the garden journal, and I'm updating the plant relation to say lettuce. So I'm updating these three properties in one go. So why don't I add a few so you can see what this actually looks like. Let's say I'm gonna add some lettuce, nettles, sochan, radishes, oh, and I've got radishes here twice so I can actually delete that from the template, and peppers, sage. So you can see those already got connected to the plant database. And I can start putting in some numbers here, and right? I can say, I'm just, you know, making, making stuff up. And you'll see it gets totaled on the right. And this is a way for them to manage their uh, donation beds and see kind of what's happening from the private beds versus the donation beds, etc. And then that gets summed up and there's a total here and there's a total per produce harvested. If I open up Sage, for example, I can see here total pounds 21. So it's actually adding up all of those different properties here. So you can see I'm just adding up each of these properties, the 10%, the donation beds and the private beds, giving us a total number of pounds. And so these buttons just make it really easy for them to add these in one go. Otherwise you'd have to manually add it here. So new produce 
and I'd have to link it up to the relation. I'd have to choose it from the plant database. So it just kind of saves you a couple extra steps because they're going to be harvesting the same plants over and over again, week by week. And then we've got some different ones for summer and fall, etc. So we've built these into the template. So all she has to do is come in, click the buttons, add any new ones, and there's a harvest log that they can then share with the community. Now on the bottom of this page, we have the harvest log again, organized by weekly totals. And so what's happening here is I have this grouped by created time, and we're saying to group the date by week and show the newest one first. And so I can see all of the produce that was harvested with all of the totals at the bottom. Then I can view the same information again, but change the grouping and change the filter to be by month. So it's still being grouped by the same property, created time. This time we're grouping by month. And that just allows you again to see the totals at different time scales. And then we can even do a yearly wrap up. And this just gives her the ability to view this at a glance. And again, keeping those harvest log records week by week. Now then we've created a shareable page that then Lucille can share with the city. So let's take a look at that. So we have a publicly shared weekly harvest page. That means nobody has to have a Notion account, even if they don't have an account. Uh, the folks at the city can review this page and get the information that they need. They don't need to do anything. They don't need to send a PDF. They can literally just share the link to this page. And here, I believe we just have a similar view as before where the harvest log is grouped by created time. And we've hidden all the properties except for the total pounds. So all of these are hidden because they don't need to see any of the plot, the donation beds, whatever. They just need to see the totals for each of the different produce with a total. So again, this is just a page that they can come to and refresh every week. And they're always going to see the most up-to-date current week. And we can also set up a sum here to say sum of total pounds. And that's it. It's a super simple page, but it allows them to share that data publicly and allows them to make really fun use of those template buttons. So we basically have a very gardener friendly page that requires very little clicking, very little decision making. And if we do need to make any changes to the template, we can do that together here. And we go back to editing these buttons at the template level. So for example, I know that we've got two radishes accidentally. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And if I want to add a new one, just to show you what it looks like to add these buttons, it's actually faster to duplicate these than it is to make a new one because most of the properties are already in here. And instead of peppers, again, we can tr uh, change this to something different. Let's say wild plums. I'm going to delete peppers. And then I'm going to say wild plums. And they may or may not have an emoji for that. Maybe peach will be close, close enough. Great. And so anytime a new harvest log is added, that's going to be available in terms of the buttons. So again, that just saves a whole bunch of clicks, makes it super easy, super gardener friendly, and a really fun way to use buttons. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration. I know this is a pretty niche use case, but I always think it's fun to see examples in the wild. Hopefully it gives you some fun ideas of how you might want to use Notion buttons. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.